before we begin, we should just say that these aren't questions that you should necessarily ask the answers, but they are questions that we do get asked a lot. And they're not going to be nice questions, but hopefully we can talk about them, discuss them, and break down some misconceptions about what it's like to be a professional dancer. So, who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go. Go on. <laughs> Okay. So, first question. Do you alter or Photoshop images for social media? I, I personally don't. Um, but having said that, I would probably only choose images that I think are good of me. Um, it's funny, like, when I of, often scroll, like you do, and you find a dancer that I've never even met, but I think, in my eyes, they look what seems to be perfect, you know? And I don't know if they've airbrushed, or I don't know if it's just good angle, good lighting, whatever, but in my eyes, they're perfect, and I, like, look up to that. So then whenever I go to post something of myself, I'm kind of like, oh. Yeah. I, I want to post, obviously, the best of me because I'm just being selfish and I want to look good. Yeah. But at the same time, I know that there may be one other person who's going to look at that and have the same view, and that's when I'm like, oh. It kind of, like, grinds a bit with me because it's not, it's not real. Like, I have marks. I have not maybe someone else's ideal physique, but at least if they could see an image of me that's real and what I look like every day or me at my worst, that's something they can be like, oh, do you know what? It's okay. Like, okay, I look like that, but I can still make it. Like, I think that's really <laughs> inspiring, though, like to show your, it is. who you are for who you are. But it's that, like... That yeah. grind of, do I want to be inspirational for someone else where I may not look my best, or do I want to put forward this best image of myself, which maybe will enhance my career a bit, or, you know, yeah. there's I so many aspects to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's natural as dancers, we're so, like, perfectionist, and mm -hmm. we want... And as you said, like, we see perfect images all the time, so... It's normal to want to look good and to select the best images. And dance is movement, so when we take a picture, it's not necessarily taken at the right time or the right angle. And it's normal to, if you take photos with a photographer, to like discuss with him and like choose the right angle. But then to Photoshop and to go that extra, um, yeah. Yeah, doing that extra thing to make you look better and to also like kind of like cheat, uh, it's probably not the best. And as you said, like it can like destroy someone's confidence, like maybe a young dancer looking at pictures on Instagram and like, oh, I'm never going to look like that. And then it's not inspir inspirational anymore. It's, uh, it's like mm -hmm. destroying confidence. I think I'm the opposite. <laughs> like, if I see it, like, I will Photoshop or, like, edit my foot because <laughs> I don't have great feet. So, like, if someone takes a photo of me, like, I know it's not going to look to, I guess, what the standards of, like, dance images are, you know what I mean? Or what we're right, believed to think, like, that is the standard. But I think it's because, like, I have, like, low confidence in my photos. So, I like... I will edit them slightly to make them look better just to make myself feel better. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then I guess that is just, like, the whole thing of, like, because so many photos are Photoshop, like, we have it in our head. Like, we have to aspire to that kind of, like, fake, like, end goal, which mm -hmm. no one has because a lot of photos are um, Photoshop. So if someone Photoshop me or I Photoshop myself, like, I don't mind it, but I do see, like, the, like, the damage that does. So I do feel like, like, nowadays we should, if there is, like, a campaign or a photo shoot or something like that, like, in the bottom, we should be honest and be like, this photo has been edited. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. then kind of puts, like, for younger dancers, like you're saying, like, so they know, like, oh, this photo is edited. So maybe what I'm seeing in the photo isn't something I should aspire to because it's not reality. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. But 
I mean, I'm down for a bit of Photoshop because <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of biscuits I think, and uh, <laughs> I need them edited out. I think, yeah, I think when you work with a choreographer and it's like, it's not live, then you can, you can do it like re in a real way and not cheat too much and just work on angles and, and right timing for the picture. But then when it's live, when we're like, pictures are taken during the shows. Show, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I've seen some pictures that have been taken during the shows and I'm like, oh my God, do I look like this? <laughs> uh, but so maybe if, you know, we can, you know, if you're not at the right time on your point shoe, like if there's a little bit of Photoshop to like rearrange yeah. the line, mm. Why not? And as long as we still look like we are, and um, yeah. I agree. I think I go b going back to what you said about like standards. I think yeah. I'm like, who, who's actually set that standard of what as ballet dancers we feel we need to look like? Like, is it, can we change this as like an industry? Or I think it would be good to be able to like, I don't know how, like, yeah. Are we able to change it? I don't know. Yeah, it's like I, we've been brainwashed. Like this exactly, is the, yeah. this, it's like, as well in like, I guess the beauty industry, like this yeah. is the standard we must aspire yeah. to, but why do we follow those it's rules? It's not necessarily like, yeah. real, like. Yeah. yeah. And also you must, you might see someone like with amazing lines on Instagram and then you'll see them moving and you're like, oof. Yeah. Like, they're yes. not good dancers, yeah. actually. They look amazing on yeah. pictures, but they're not good dancers. Because dancers And there's only just still. a few that are amazing. Like, we can name Sylvie Guillem. She's yeah. always going to look good on pictures. Lucia Lacara. <laughs> <always gonna> look <laughs> but, like, they're kind of aliens. And, mm. um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think at Scottish Ballet, we're not necessarily, like... We don't have the, the best lines, but I think every dancer's got something to give and so much energy that you can see on pictures mm. and mm. yeah we just we just bring us on stage and not our feet <laughs> yeah no yeah i think it'll be interesting also to ask like the audience point of view like yeah. if you see an image like the perfect perfect feet perfect like really flexible or what we see as like the amazing standard but then it'll be interesting to see what if they find this more amazing or actually if they watch that person dance, yeah, what they you know, what, what they enjoy more mm -hmm. because actually it, I'm pr pretty sure that they would enjoy seeing the actual movement and yeah. the art of dancing. And so I think that's what we need to realise is that, you know, like you said, dance is... And we're the, the only still. ones seeing it as well because yeah. when I worked with a photographer, they were like, what? Mm -mm. Your foot doesn't yeah. look good? No, it's okay. Yeah. Like, no, it's, <laughs> it's not, not good. It's not good yeah. but they don't understand. So they don't even see mm. it. So it's really just, it's us, it's the dancers. And mm. the young dancers will have that same vision. Yeah. So, mm -mm. yeah, probably good to change that. And, yeah. But don't get me wrong. Like, I'm also, like, really self-conscious. And mm -hmm. I am really, like, oh, like, I always have that reaction when I see a picture. And you always see the small details. And mm -hmm. whereas when I see a picture of you guys or someone else, in the company, I'm like, oh, they look so good. But mm. when it's you, it's like, oh. You're your worst critic. Yeah, yeah. Like, 100%, absolutely. 100%. I think we were trained that way to, yeah. like, exactly, like, yeah. perfection. And then if it's not, even if, like, a little finger is out, you're mm. like, no, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, why? But, like, it's like when you look at athletes, like tennis players, where they're, like, they take a mid-movement of a serve and then their mm -hmm. face is not quite right. Yeah. And, and you yeah. see the media posting it and you're like, oh, that's not really nice. And I feel yeah. like... Yeah, I feel like it's okay because actually it's their natural, their mid movement, their mid serve, but you can see in their face like the concentration or like the strength yeah. that they're about to hit. And I think, I think it's also interesting that audience see that from us. Maybe that, yeah, okay, mid movement, we all hate yeah. like a mid yeah. movement yeah. step, <laughs> <laughs> but in a way you, it shows also like how things are done and it reminds people that it is a movement art form. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, while we're on like the subject of social media, there are some people um, out there uh, in the ballet industry, I guess, who are like pushing to show the, I guess, not so uh, photoshopped and like perfection. That's so glamorous. Yeah, exactly. Perfectionist, <laughs> perfectionist side of like the ballet world. Um, there's like an Instagram account um, called Biscuit Ballerina who yeah. kind of um, dedicates her page to like showing like, I guess, like ugly uh, biscuits, biscuits. <laughs> um, and I guess maybe it's 
worthwhile, like a biscuit for anyone who doesn't know. It's like, if you like point your foot, you have this like gorgeous line, but then if it's not so pointed, it kind of like <laughs> comes up a bit flexed and the toes are curled. Um, I actually graced the Instagram page once because I sent in one of my biscuits. I am like the king of biscuits. So like, that's when we talk about Photoshop. I don't mind them being Photoshop because it's not the ideal line, but I am proud of having like <laughs> ugly photos of myself. Like I have an album on my uh, MacBook where like uh, I've saved all my ugly photos because I'm not so like, um, I'm not like sensitive to an ugly photo. Yeah. Some dancers, I guess if you, you see an ugly photo, like it's like really kind of like, take it personally and it's like, oh damn, be because we are, I guess, brainwashed to have this like image of what's great. But I love an ugly photo of myself. And I also think it's good that um, like she's doing on her Instagram page that like we promote that and like uh, we showcase like there is an ugly side. It's so I'm just wondering a, what you guys... Yeah, it's a bit of a caricature, I think, and it just brings fun into it and just, yeah, it just takes the pressure off somehow and it makes us laugh. Uh, and she's a good dancer as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, she's in a, like, uh, renowned company and, uh, and she's, she's a good dance, dancer, but she just, yeah, kind of, like, destroy this concept of, like, perfection. And mm -mm. That's the way to do it, like... Um, she makes us laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, whenever we always get photos back from a production, the photos that I remember the most are the ones that I find funny because someone's been caught just as they're about to, like, take off for a jump. So, like, the legs are a bit bent, the feet are a bit biscuity, and we have, obviously, like, our dancers' group chat where we send funny things. And they are always the photos that go in there. <laughs> yes, and it's never, like, the nice one. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Not a, on Instagram, but no, in the group but chat. it's this joint moment where we can all, like, laugh at this picture because yeah. it's a position we all go through to get to the, like, amazing lines. But it's just been caught and it just looks terrible on its own. Yeah. But for yeah. everyone to just, like, look at it and laugh and be like, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Like, I love that. Yeah, and the fact that you said that you don't really care, like, yeah. I think I do at first, but then I, I reflect, like, I take a step back and I'm like, yeah, like, it's okay. It's, it's movement, yeah. you yeah. go through position, and so, yeah, I don't know about yeah. you guys, yeah. but... I mean, we're criticised so much in our jobs. Like, it's our body that gets the criticism. Mm -mm. Um, so if you can just find small things that you can laugh at, I think mm. that's, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's good you know. to, it brings lightness to mm -hmm. something that's yeah. hard and we work for every day. So I think it's nice to be able to just mm -hmm. laugh yeah. about it and then, yeah, and then on to the next photo. <laughs> on to the next yeah. bad one, yeah. And hopefully that's caught the shape. <laughs> <laughs> cool, well, let's move on to the next question. Yeah. Yes. You guys ready? So what if you're too tall, short, built, etc.? Do you have anything to say? Uh, I know I can say something about being <laughs> tall, but you didn't get yeah. that. Um, I think, well, I think in the, like, in the industry, there is like a thing placed on looks, especially like body image and how your body looks, which, you know, some people, well, you can control some parts, aspects of it, but like your height, you can't control. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. um, and in the industry, there are companies that say, like, we want this height limit. We want you to be so tall or, like, you know. And I find, I understand that to an extent because, for instance, if they have a company of over six foot dancers and then I go and audition and I'm five seven, like, I'm not going to be able to partner the girls. So I understand it. But it, it, I do find it, it is a shame when... Uh, Companies won't even look at you because of your mm. height. And again, I understand because they need certain dancers to partner certain people, and I totally understand that aspect. But you could be what they're looking for, mm. but they won't even look at you because you're not the height. And it's a shame because it's like you could marry up like company rep and dancer and ability together, and it'd be so good. And it's just a shame that the height is not the bit that's holding mm. you back, and you really just can't control it. And that is upsetting mm -mm. um and then I guess on the flip side like body image I guess weight as dancers we always get that question mm -hmm. 
about weight and it's something that is always like spoken about and I find um, I find it a difficult one I mean from like a male perspective I think when we talk about body image it's mainly focused on like the females mm -hmm. in the industry um, but I know equally the same amount of male dancers who have issues or insecurities with how they look um, and I think you know if you're not super ripped and super muscular like you can be just looked not looked down on but it's like oh like you're meant to be a ballet dancer why do you not have this like muscle and ripping out of your top and like you know what I mean and it's like Superman. yeah exactly and like whenever like I'm not super ripped I'd like to think I'm toned <laughs> but when we have productions where like it's like the girls are in just like kind of like bras and uh, little shorts and guys mm -hmm. are just in shorts and the tops off. I think people just um, would expect like maybe the girls would feel uncomfortable and they're just like, oh, it's fine. Boys can just take their tops off. And I find that like funny because like I hate taking my top off for a reduction because it's so exposing and it's like, ugh. like I have people who come, who like would come and watch and they were like, oh, I didn't know who you were on stage, but then I just look for the really skinny one. And I was like... Okay, and as a guy, you don't want to be, well, me personally, like, I wouldn't want to be referred to as skinny, which isn't an issue. But again, in this industry, you're meant to believe to be a bit more, like, muscular in tone. So when someone says that, I'm like, ugh. And then it plays into, like, your insecurities. Mm, and then, yeah. so whenever I take my top off on stage, I'm like, oh, God, like, here we go again. Like, you know what I mean? And I guess it's just, like, that is our industry and people always talk about, our bodies and stuff instead of maybe our dancing, which just is a bit, like, annoying to mm. always have those mm. questions and always be like, how's your body? Or, like, what do you do to get your body? And it's like, oh, I'd rather you just talk about my dance ability or my, my stage yeah. presence mm. or something like that instead mm. of what I physically look like. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know. No, how yeah, you no. guys We're, feel. like, all built different, yeah. and that's the thing. And I think it takes you so long to just be, like, Okay, do you know what? This is my body. I cannot do anything about it. So I just have to use what I've got and see where it takes me. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, like, the hardest thing was being tall. Um, not necessarily the height actually being the issue, but how I felt about being tall. Because the whole way through my training, you stand in class, tallest at the back so that they can see you, you know, mm. like they can see the small ones and they can see the tall ones. And then you get to company work and it's always tallest at the back. And yeah. you don't really realise it has an effect mm. because that's just how it is. But then if you're giving an opportunity or something and you have to do a solo and you're suddenly right there at the front of the stage and you're like, I, I've never been here. <laughs> and it's terrifying mm. because you're used to hiding Basically, you always have to be in line. No one should ever see you. That's what they say. Um, so then to suddenly be so revealed, it's terrifying. Um, mm -hmm. Exposing and, as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's a lot to like think about mentally. Mm. Um, yeah. I think for me, it's the total opposite. It's being too small. <laughs> Which is funny because in this company, you always play like, my mum's role. Yeah. Like, I guess we always blonde. get paired yeah. together because of the like, height difference. Yeah, no. <laughs> and, and I'm haircut. always older. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Well, um, no, for me, it's my height. It's been, I, yeah, I think it's been a struggle since I started dance because it was, so are you too small for this? Um, even at school, it was like, oh, don't bother sending your CVs yeah. to this country because they won't even accept your height, like it's not even, like don't even, and I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, and yeah, and I, I mean, I'm not gonna, yeah, I've lied about my height on my CV just to even get an yeah. audition. Um, and funnily enough, I would get the audition, even if it was like an extra, like two centimeters on my CV, which I don't know, can you see two centimeters on stage? So, yeah. Probably not, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's difficult and even, you know, even when you're in a studio and people are like, oh, you know, because you're small, try and dance big, dance big, because mm. you're so small. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, yeah. my arm can only go <laughs> yeah. as far as, you know. Um, mm. So, yeah. We I get told that too, actually, <laughs> as tall people. True, like, dance yeah. as, as much as you're tall, basically. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. No, it's difficult. Yeah. And then 
but yeah, I feel like there's also within the ballet industry there's certain roles that you can yeah. only do as a small person or as yeah. a tall person. And yeah, I think maybe it's the industry that sees height a different way. Maybe it's, I think, from a very long time ago and perhaps choreographer stills, I think, see maybe a person doing that role that certain height, so it's stuck in their head that way. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, also, you know, I can't play the role of a mother because... Or my kids would be taller, which <laughs> maybe in real life is a thing, but on but stage there are it isn't. small moms, yeah. I know, there are small right? Moms. I will be a small mom one day, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but not on stage. You will be one. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I guess yeah, for you two, it's different. It's the other way around. It's different. Well, I think yeah, I've seen it for so long as a disadvantage, mm. and then I saw it. I was called Bambi at school <laughs> because I couldn't control my arms and my legs. And then uh, I saw it, I was like in between, is that a disadvantage or an advantage? Mm. I was like, I can really, it can really become an advantage. But at the moment, like you get, you don't get cast on things because you don't have a partner. Um, yeah, uh, you, you're not as in control of your body, but then you learn this through experience and technique. And then it can really become an advantage because, uh, yeah, you, you dance big, you, you have like long extensions and all that, but to really uh, believe in that and because you also, you can't dance as quick, you can't, um, so it's really, it was hard work to really accept uh, the fact that I was torn and to work with it and not against it. Yeah. And... And yeah, I think I'm really happy with that. But it's been a struggle also to find jobs. Like mm. I was told to be too tall, like for so so many times. And and as you said, I understand it that they need yeah. like standards. And there are different companies that some companies really want unity. I can name Paris Opera or like some companies in Germany maybe. Like there's really they want unity. They have like big corps de ballet. They want everyone to be pretty much the same size. I understand. And then, but I'm glad we have other companies like ours mm. where the group is so um, diverse, diverse, diverse yeah. in Unique. height, in shape, mm. in like everything. And and that's good that it's available mm. um, out there. Like that's not just Scottish Ballet, but there's other companies that don't really care about that and they take you as you are as a dancer uh, and it's I guess it's good to have those other companies as well because I've seen Swan Lake in Paris Opera and the Cor de Ballet just looks slick and like amazing <laughs> and yeah it's yeah it's a conversation we can have but I think yeah it's it can be frustrating for, for dancers to not be able to go to one company or another mm. because of the height or, or being too built as well. We, we talked about that. Mm. But yeah, it's good that there's other companies looking for more diverse mm. physiques. Yeah. And yeah, also, yeah, I think in training, do, you know, during our education, um, I think that's when it's the hardest time when, when I go through, you know, puberty and our bodies changed. And our teachers, I don't know how it was for you uh, in training, but our teachers are not, were not really uh, understanding or they were mm. not, they were not really modern. Like they don't, didn't have like a modern thinking. They were just like so like traditional, like you need to be skinny, you need to lose three kilos. Mm -hmm. um, I've got. I, I actually had friends visiting um, in Edinburgh uh, this this winter, and we both, we three of us, we went to the same school. One of uh, one of her is like a freelance dancer in Paris, and the other is just a business consultant now. And those two ones, like one got told um, when she was at school, mm, "You're not turned out enough. You'll never be a ballet dancer." Like what is turned out? Like you can really work with mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. you can cheat you can and you can become a ballet dancer like yeah. there's no problem with that 
And the other like struggled with her weight like for so long, and she got told like, yeah, you're just too wide, you're just too, um, what's the word, you know? Broad. broad. Yeah, too broad. Um, it's just never gonna happen. And her, like, she had to stop. Mm. She was like, she's really happy uh, to have th made this decision, but she had to stop for that reason because mm. she was like, I don't want to put my body. Uh, I don't want to, um, yeah, change. Uh, change my, I, I can't change my body. I mean, she tried and she had probably, like she had eating disorders um, because she wanted to get to that perfect shape, mm. lose weight and be thinner. But she realized when she was a teenager, like 16, 17, that she didn't want to go through that her whole life and she just wanted to stop and have a healthy mm. life and and mm. and stop ballet. I mean, mm. I think it it proves that the message here is like, you know, unfortunately, some people do stop because, but maybe it's the right decision for them. But I think we also show that you can be a ballet dancer exactly. if you're small, yeah. if you're yeah. tall, and you can be and a ballet dancer exactly if you're a bit like, bolder. And yeah, and so she didn't really have to stop. But yeah, she. They made her believe that exactly she, had to she stop. needed yeah. to, yeah. yeah. And, and she needed that's to be really, that that's really so that's yeah. sad. From yeah, from yeah. The teachers. But I think it's just coming from the teachers' training, like being a bit mm. behind, you know, mm. having that mm. Paris Opera um, model and mm. not wanting to change that. Okay, so should we move on to another question? Absolutely. Have a look. What is your body fat ratio? Can you share the perfect ballet dancer diet? Okay, well, <laughs> do I know that? Yeah, I have, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea because I don't care. <laughs> like, good. it's, I feel like mm -hmm. as dancers, we're always asked about diets and what we fuel ourselves, which, again, I understand we're like elite athletes. What do you fuel an elite athlete? But I always find with those questions, there's like a, a hint of like, I don't know, <laughs> not shadiness, but I can't think of the word. Yeah. But there's They're just a trying hint. to like see there's, if that stereotype yeah, is right. Yeah, there's, there's like a hidden meaning behind that yes. question. I'm like, what do you truly want to ask? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know my BMI, but not BMI, body fat ratio. ratio, because it's not important to me. It's not important to my training. Um, it's just something that I don't care to know either. Diet wise, like me personally, don't have a diet. Well. I have a diet because I eat, but like not <laughs> as in a diet as wh where we're trained to think of like a diet of like limiting calories mm. and celery and salad, like not that diet. Like I literally eat anything, um, which includes takeaways, um, <laughs> burgers, chips. Like I eat whatever I want because we spend so much energy in the studio. I know kind of whatever I eat. I'm going to burn off. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, so me personally, I don't follow a strict diet. I do try and be healthy because I know, like, again, like, we're elite athletes. It's like you wouldn't pu put, like, secondhand fuel in, like, mm. a sports car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. exactly. I fuel my body with good, nutritious food. I indulge occasionally um, or a lot, depending on the week. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just, like, I eat what I want and I just... When I want to be healthy, I'm healthy. When I want to splurge and indulge, I indulge. Um, and that's about it. And the diet also, I guess, changes when we're on tour, mm. depending yeah. on the facilities we have. Yeah. If we have a kitchen, we can really control our diet. If we're touring without kitchens and stuff, we are limited to controlling our diet. So then we really rely on restaurants and supermarkets to provide the, nutritionist, the nutritional food that we need that mm -hmm. we can't cook ourselves. So there's so many factors into dancers' diets, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think with that question, yeah, you can, it can be a very interesting question to answer to because it can be, oh, what is the diet in terms of what do you eat to help you be the best as what you do? But it can also be seen as, mm, do you just eat one apple a day? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I think this, no. when, we get that, <laughs> when we get that question, we shouldn't... Um, you know, run away from it. We should actually educate and and say, well, we are dancers, we need energy. So that's what I eat, what we eat. And as you said, it just really depends on 
the day. Like period, yeah, the day, period of time, like where, where, whether we're like really busy or not, like the busier you are, the more you have to eat, or also like when we're not that busy, maybe we can indulge a bit more. <laughs> like, so um, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just being clever about, yeah, what you eat. Um, and we need to eat healthy because we need to have healthy muscles and, and avoid injuries and all that. But it's really important when we get that question to say, like, it's, I mean, to be honest, but I think we all are, like, really looking after our body and fueling our body um, in the right way and, and, and show that we have understanding about nutrition. And we do. We've had talks about it. Every in day. the company, mm -hmm. every year we get a nutritionist to come, um, and they're not here to tell us not to eat. <laughs> they're here to tell us eat. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, just and some people have like really no knowledge about nutrition, and we do, and we should like really embrace it. Mm -hmm. And and I'm personally, I'm really glad. I've really learned a lot uh, through my professional career about nutrition. Um, and I sit in a more like healthy way than before. Whereas in training, I, we didn't have much education. And yeah, one day a teacher could tell you, oh, you need to lose three kilos. Or mm, you've indulged uh, this summer. Like, and then, so you see food as the devil. Mm. And, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm just, stop, I'm just gonna stop eating then. Um, mm. And then it's not healthy. You're, you're growing as an adult. You have to fuel your body to grow mm -hmm. and to grow healthy. And and yeah, I'm really I'm really thankful to have started professionally and have learned a lot about nutrition. And and yeah, we burn so much as well. So we need to refuel. We need to mm -hmm. refill. <laughs> refill. But yeah, refuel, refuel, yeah. refuel. Yeah. refuel. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, it's true. It's, I think it's school good. was a hard beat, actually. Yeah. I think because they, you can fall into the trap or like you get complimented in class because you've lost maybe a bit of weight yeah. and then you fall into that like, then you start. I mean, that was me personally. As Then I was like, oh, that seems to be What's working. Like, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then I would lose a little bit more and then I would get even more complimented and then I would lose a little bit more and then they'd be like, you're looking fabulous. And then you're like... Yay! And then, and then you fall but into I'm that starving. trap. Yeah, I know. Also, and then you fall into the trap of losing too much, and then, then they start to go enough. Yeah. But they only, they only see it when it's gone too far, and they only see it. Mm -hmm. And I think then they they just say like send you to see a a dietitian or a nutritionist, and then by then my mind was already gone yeah. um, and I think only my family was able to be there and help me out but I wish someone had said to me oh Constance you know when you're older and you get into a company if you get into a company you know you're going to have to do back-to-back -back shows double shows you know your bones are literally going to break if you, mm. that's and mm. I think that's not talked about yeah, uh, no. maybe now I mean it was a long time ago since I was at school but yeah I think yeah. what we done necessarily learn about especially as women is osteoporosis if you don't you know eat the right things and literally you will break a bone or you'll get injured or you'll sprain your ankle and so I think yeah, stress fracture yeah, in ballet exactly like, yeah. so common and it's, so where does that come from they don't talk about the longevity of our career mm -hmm. they just talk about looking great at that right time again a little bit for that one picture mm -hmm. uh, and I think you know actually what we do like well, if we would finished the, the entire Nutcrack tour, it would have been 60... 75, sev four, 75 74 four, shows. Yeah. And, you know, you can't do 74 shows with an yeah. eating disorder or not eating the right thing and fueling your body. So I think, yeah, I think it's... I wish people in the dance world really realise how much you need to eat and the good quality of food and what's right for you. It might be different for all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some people are more fueled for carbohydrates and then the science gets into it you know if you if you you know you want a fast um burst, burst then you'll go for a, a 
a white carb, like something that will release it quickly. If you want like a slow release because you have to last the entire show, then you go for a different type of carbs. But I think there's, I don't think there's a wrong typically food. I think it's just what type of food, when. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I learned yeah. a lot with the company, what is going to help me out so I can, you know, not feel like I can't do my Kodai because I've got nothing yeah. left yeah. in my body. So, yeah, it, it's difficult. And I think there is... I've seen many people with eating disorders. I've seen some that have come out of it okay, some that have had to stop to stop, to stop yeah. dance. Um, but, yeah, I think it's... Um, it's difficult, it's dangerous, and I hope people get the right support. And I think it's important, mm. like, if you see it happening, that mm. you find a way to help yourself or find someone that can yeah. help. And the good thing, I think, it would be to, to like, start s as soon as mm. you can. Like, Training. And, and educate in the schools, like, mm. as much as possible. Um, and yeah, I remember having like one chat with a nutritionist at school, like organized by, by the school, one out of like seven years. Mm. So like, I think we need more. And as teenagers, we're really like, yeah, just developing mm. as an adult and our body, our minds. And we really need like structure and, and support because otherwise we're just left alone and, and we don't know what to do and we start doing mm. Mm the wrong things, mm. as I said. Like. It's easy. I think, I'm, I think for me as a teenager, I was easily influenced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so if I'd seen yeah. that, you know, someone And, and same praised. with your friends as well. Exactly. Like if your yeah, friend yeah, yeah. doesn't eat, you're like, okay, I'm not going to I shouldn't eat. Yeah, you yeah. feel guilty because yeah. you're at lunch and then people are looking at what yeah, you eat yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. this is yeah. awkward now. And so, yeah, so. I just, yeah, I really wonder how, how we can change that within, mm. like, the um, training world, um, yeah, probably with more, more and more education and more and more support. Mm. But yeah, uh, yeah, I remember at school it wasn't easy. <laughs> I was gonna say I think that's like the biggest thing I've learned is everyone needs something different. Mm -mm. Like there's not one person that needs the same thing as another, especially in our jobs. And not only because we all do different roles, we all do different amount of shows. But just what you need is so individual and you just really cannot compare mm. to anyone else because you might need double what they're eating and you might get a shifty look, but it's like, no, I need this. I know I need mm -hmm. this yeah. because this is how I'm going to do the show mm. like, to the best of my you, ability. How do you know this when you're a teenager? That's yeah, the that's, what's that's hard. Because you, you, you learn you to, to... Yeah, you learn about yourself as you go. Mm. And uh, yeah, I just I wonder like it's an open question, and, and it's okay we to probably make don't mistakes, have any answers. I think but I think it's okay yeah. to get yeah. it wrong because that's yeah, part of, of life. But and I think the thing, yeah, being it, having that support yeah, is support, yeah. the help, the best way to. And the body changes so much when you're mm. going mm. through puberty as well. So I think it's wow. I just notice as like being in this profession a bit longer is like like because it body image is so like focused on dance and stuff like you know we're a company that has all different body types which I think is ex is excellent but then you have people who come to watch the show or you have people who review the show and I I believe in the company we promote quite a healthy body image like we're not like forced to lose weight well from my experience we're not forced to lose weight and we're not like we're not like told company. to like yeah like cut down on that but then when people come watch a show or reviewers review the show if we are all a bit different they comment on it and say like oh the production was nice but there was such an array of body types like it was a bit distracting and then mm. it's like well then what do you want to promote do you want to promote mm. healthy dancers do you want to promote healthy mindsets healthy bodies or are you then trying to put pressure on us because we all look different? Do you then want us all to lose we weight, wheat, lose <laughs> weight and be stick thin? Like, what is the end goal here when you write on Twitter? Love the production, but people on the show looked close to anorexia. Like, mm. I think it's not a really... We can't please like, everyone. I agree, so, but I just think the audience also have As, yeah. a responsibility to... Yeah. 
not then put that pressure on dancers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, on the so flip side. it for side. yourself and go and see uh, the ball show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, Instead of, yeah, like yeah. putting it out, out there yeah. and then you can take it. But yeah, actually, yeah, comments like this. Oh, on internet. Just, yeah. Everything is like okay to say on internet. Like, oh, yeah. it's the power of social media or yeah. the non-power. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's and helpful. Yeah, and but like that comment hurts. isn't going to it's not going to help anyone. A dancer yeah, if no. they were, no. if they did it, were had experiencing an, issue, an eating yes, disorder, absolutely. to then point it out on stage. And then it's like, that's not supporting or helping that dancer. You're exactly. just emphasizing their issues. It's oh, like, yeah. ugh, it's just such a tricky road yeah. when yeah. people do that, I find. I'm yeah. Just like, I have yeah. had like the opposite though. Like people yeah, who've too. seen the show or especially when we put out digital work because obviously the audience is much wider. People are watching it that have never seen a ballet. Mm. Um, and I have four older brothers, and they haven't been to many, many ballets, but when we put out digital work, they can watch it because they don't have to come to the theatre. <laughs> um, and when they respond and are like, I love seeing people look so natural, mm. as in I like seeing a range of body shapes, heights, because it makes it real. I think often there's this kind of wall between the real world and ballerinas. And actually, we're real people. We aren't just pretending to be this ideal. So I think to represent real people on screen, on stage, it's comforting. It's like we, as humans, can do this as an art form. Mm -hmm. There's no limits. I think those comments are the comments we want yeah like to exactly. celebrate exactly when yeah. it's a kind of negative one when it's like, the other way it's not achieve what yeah, yeah. yeah. i, always, I also helpful. understand that people want the unity you see what i mean that i understand then but then don't comment yeah. on it or yeah keep it for yourself but yeah it's such a tradition you know that you have in your brain and and some people are not ready to yeah. change that mm. but, I always, the way I think of ballet dancers' bodies is like, I don't know, well, I'm not a marathon runner, so I don't know what their experience is, but I don't know, you would never question why maybe a marathon runner is like slim and mm -hmm. yeah, really physical. Mm -hmm. Ballet dancers are, yeah. like mm -hmm. marathon runners. We do a three hour show like mm -hmm. every night. It's expected that we're gonna be kind of slender, slender maybe, mm -hmm. quite, you know, toned. But mm -hmm. you wouldn't question, I, I don't know, I'm not a marathon mm -hmm. runner, but you wouldn't maybe question why they're a bit more slimmer. No, than, I, I you know agree. what I mean? I agree, yeah. Uh, I agree. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's still, I know there's this whole, like, is it a sport? Is it an art? But we're using oh, yeah. our body like <laughs> athletes, and therefore, yes. you know, we will, we literally use our muscles every day, so yeah. they will get yeah. muscly. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes. um, shall Next we move question? on? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Is it me? I think yeah. it might be me. Um, my question is, uh, <laughs> is it hard being a dancer? What does hard yes. mean? Yes. <laughs> In every film, <laughs> every sense, physically, yes. mentally. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think mentally especially, yeah. I yeah. think there mm. is that aspect of um, where you'll face many rejections. I think we've all talked about that with heights or other different ways. Um, and you have to be able to get back up and say, no, 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 this I can, I can push through. Um, there's that aspect of it. There's the other aspect of a bit like what we said, where we get told every day, criticised in positive and negative way, but we train to improve and we train every day so all you hear every day is this is better try this more like this this wasn't good try this and and also facing a mirror every day isn't <laughs> probably <laughs> the nicest thing to do I guess <laughs> mentally um there's that aspect of it there's also the aspect of like getting injured which I think unfortunately is part of our job um and the aspect of how you deal with an injury, I think psychologically that can be really, really tricky. I know I've struggled and weirdly, you don't want to get more injured, but you learn through getting injured, if that makes oh, yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. 
So I think injuries are a part of our job and actually can be very positive. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, they happen. Um, but yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of it, even psychologically. Yeah. yeah. I think it can, can be hard like in the moment when you have to get through something like a really hard solo or mm. a really long path, like stamina-wise. And, and then so you get really ups and downs during the mm. rehearsal process because you're like, am I ever going to get there? Am I ever going to be able to do it? Like, um, so, yeah, you really have to go through those like curves, ups and downs and, and yeah, uh, take yourself back up and, mm. you know, always like push yourself. And you, we have support like uh, from the staff as well. Like, because when you say we're criti criticised, it's always like... In a positive... In a, here it's to like make us improve and it's like good corrections and, and all that. And yeah, in the long run, it's also really hard for those like mm. dealing with pain mm. all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> and, mm. and yeah, like, yeah, it is hard. But we, I think when we get that question, it's good to like flip it also to the positive side and how much joy we get out mm. of it when we're on stage and when we get to perform. And actually the challenge is also like really positive. Mm -hmm. even, even though it's hard, like what is life without a challenge? Mm. Mm. It's boring. Mm. <laughs> so, and that's why we do it. Um, yeah. We're, I think dancers are a bit masochist. <laughs> 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 we like pain. <laughs> <laughs> but we do it to, yeah, like the joy balances it out. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. I think what's funny about our jobs is we put ourselves on stage for like scrutiny, for all the criticism. It's not like another job where maybe you submit some work and they criticize that and then you get it back and you're like, eh, oh well, next thing. This is us, like mm. our bodies, our talent, <laughs> our physicality. <laughs> that, so every bit of criticism is kind of personal. Yeah. And sometimes you can end up in this rut of taking it all a bit too personally and you end up like quite low because you forget about the positives. Yeah. And then you'll have a rehearsal and they'll be like, that was good. And you're like... Oh, and you cling on to that yeah, look, that tiny day. comment, like, oh, then, that was good. And you're like, yes. But then they said that was good, and you're like, oh, no. Yeah, it wasn't. Oh, yeah, that was all. Yeah, well, you <laughs> You're just trying to make me feel better. <laughs> yeah, so I think you need the mental strength, but you get that through the training. Mm. Like, you have to. Mm. And I've had friends that have quit dancing just purely because it was too much to you know, mentally cope with it all. And that is so sad when they enjoyed it so much. But it's the moments like being on stage that really outweigh for me all like maybe the mental struggles that I have yeah. and really make it all worth it. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's what I do it for, to be on stage and love every minute of it. And that challenge to get to there makes that moment just even more special, mm. so. Yeah. yeah. I think um, I was thinking like <clears throat> what you were going on is like every day is like a kind of like, not a challenge, but you have to have like the stamina to like, cause it is like, it is hard and you know, putting ourselves out there in a leotard is so exposing. Um, but I always think like as well, like with our job, it's like kind of unique. Like you're hired in as a dancer, but then like every day, is a day to impress. And I know with every job, That's that true. is the way, but like every role you do, every time you step out on stage is like that chance to like shine or like show them that you're capable to then like be like moved up and like being given better roles and stuff. So like you can't really have like an off day. So like if you're mm. on stage and you have an off day, like it's not like you've made a mistake in the office and you can quickly like cover it up. Like you've made a mistake in front of thousands of people on stage all of the company and the ballet staff like so mentally you always have to be like at a hundred and like switched on and if you're having bad days or you've had like certain things happen within your family or mm. outside of the studio like 
you can't show any of that. So you have to be so strong to like mm. get up mm. on that stage and pretend like nothing's happened mm. and then pick it back up once you get off the stage. Mm. But like on stage, you have to be, give the audience like that show that they've paid for. They want to see you mm. at a hundred. They don't want to know that your goldfish died two days ago. You know what I mean? So they're like, yeah, that. like yeah. they want to know like you're going to be a hundred percent on. Mm. So like mentally you have to be so strong, ready to like kind of, ditch one side of your life to do that side mm. and then pick it all back up and I find like mm -hmm. that's what I find sometimes like the most difficult being a dancer is always being on giving the audience what they paid for but then also having to deal with all the outside pressures of just you know you know, having a normal life and stuff that is can be mentally quite um draining mm, but yeah. Again. But it's also good in a way because you just forget about all your worries when you're on stage because you're really in the moment. Well, and then <laughs> and then that's kind of like being able to escape. Mm. Uh, but in the studio, it can be a bit harder. But I, I think, I mean, personally, I don't, um, I don't mind showing weaknesses in the studio with my colleagues, with my um, ballet masters. It's it's okay to feel low, to have it's a breakdown. It's, mm. it's also important for the colleague to yeah. see it because otherwise everyone has to pretend. Yes. You know? And so I think it's really important to show vulnerabilities um, from time to time when you feel like it's, it's not going for you on that day. But yeah, when, and actually when you're dancing is like some sort of meditation as well. So... It's also a way to escape and to think about mm. something else, to be in the present. Mm. I think what was the hardest part for me in the pandemic was not having the audience, mm. is not having and not being on stage, but mainly not having that reaction because it's what yeah. brings me back to, yeah. oh, yeah, that's literally why I'm doing this job. Yeah. It's seeing, yeah. like, mm. that person living in the theatre with a smile or that little girl yeah. in that tutu, and I'm like, okay, it's all worth it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess before we wrap up, is there anything you think maybe people should think about before asking us questions like this or other questions that we get asked all the time? I think I'd hope that when people ask questions that they're... It's just curiosity and but like in a, in a good way, just about learning about our daily life and about who we are what is our job and less as a you know I, I, I'd hope that they f forget about stereotypes mm -hmm. and all that and they're actually willing to learn about uh, what it is to be a dancer and and being able to just scrap whatever they've seen on tv or yeah or heard or mm -hmm. anything like that mm -hmm. yeah do you want me to go? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say what Marge said is like when asking a question not to reinforce a stereotype they might believe of a dancer. Have pure curiosity mm. into the lives of a dancer and want to know something new or not ask a question just hoping that we would say something they think we mm -hmm. would say. But have pure curiosity. I agree. I think also maybe have the back of your mind that we're just normal human being at yeah. the end of the day uh, and we're not doing something different. Uh, it is different because it's special and unique, but it's not different that we have to become robots or yeah. something mm -hmm. like this. And I think maybe is it a question that they would ask their child or their friend or mm -hmm. their sister or parent? And if it's not, then maybe don't... Mm. Ask us that question. Yeah, but we're just humans. Mm. We're not superheroes. We're just hoping to inspire people to take up dancing like us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for talking, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Rehearsing. Thank you.